this is the optimal zone for plant growth. Along here we have percent available moisture. Did you know not all moisture in the soil is available to plants? There's some of it that's so tightly bound when you get really, really, really dry, plants can never use it. But this is available moisture, from zero to 100. 100 is field capacity moisture the soil will hold against the force of gravity. That's field capacity. And this is timeline. All right, so this is where we want to keep our uh, moisture reading when we plant on, you know, to, to we're through harvest, rather. Okay, so that's the optimal zone. This is what happens when a lot of folks, including me, when I first started this business, didn't know what I was doing. Uh, we sprinkle. And uh, matter of fact, when I was a kid, I've told this story before, uh, we had a garden, big garden uh, in Tulsa where I grew up, and mom said, uh, you know, Steve, it's time to, to go water the garden. Well, guess what she used as her criteria to water the garden? It's when it was wilting, right. You know, things are wilting, go water the garden. Well, right here. It was very low soil moisture, so I turned the water on. Well, what do most people do when they use a sprinkler system? You know, I don't want water every day, so I just turn it on. Besides, I don't like walking in the mud when I'm trying to weed the garden, so I water the heck out of it, and I get way up here, and it's saturated, and water's running out of the garden. So I'm out of that optimum zone now, aren't I? And then what you do, we just let it dry, 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 <laughs> and we get down here, back to where we started from. Then mom says again, Steve, go water the garden. And what we didn't realize is when it's saturated and at the wilting point, these are points of stress. And when we do that continually, we reduce yield. And we affect the quality of the product we're growing. Sometimes we crack the fruit. Sometimes we make it more susceptible to infection. So we want to try to keep it right in here. And that's what we can do with drip. Small incremental applications of water enable us to keep the moisture in this zone and we can do it more practically okay and so in, in many instances with most drip systems I know with us here at the foundation we would water every day you don't have to depending there's a lot of things you got to take into consideration but by doing this we can tweak this and we can keep all that water right here where we need to be. And that's the beauty of drip. Okay, so the frequency is determined by the soil type, volume of wetted soil, and the crop demand. Clay soil or sandy soil? Which one holds the most, most moisture? Clay. Most people just know that's kind of intuitive, right? I mean, just from our experience, how long it takes to dry out and so forth. But you're right. So. Would we need to water a sandy soil more because it holds less? Usually we do, right. And the volume of wetted soil, that has a, a determination on the frequency. The more water we can store in that area, that zone, preferred zone, the longer we can go between irrigations. That's, I think that's kind of un understandable. Um, and then the crop demand. A tomato plant two weeks old, growing in the spring, doesn't require as much water as a fully grown tomato that's in the, you know, the midst of harvest, right in the middle of harvest. In the summer when the temperature's 95, I wish, and, uh, you know, and the, and the humidity is, is, you know, 40, 50 percent. So all those things you have to take into account. Another thing to think about when we do water is how deep are we watering? Most people are under the assumption that plants take up water at the same rate, the same amount, throughout the depth or throughout the, uh, the rooting zone. And that's not the case, as this shows. 40% of the water is extracted by most plants in the top quarter of their rooting zone. And so what that says, it has a lot of implication on how we water. It says we don't really need to water too deep. Now, we do need to water deep, but, you know, what is deep? Well, it depends on the plants. Obviously, I'm going to water a pecan tree deeper than I would carrots based on the root, how they root. But by, by seeing this, if we can keep it in the top half of that rooting zone, 
we're getting 70% of the active roots. And we can do a good job taking care of the needs of that plant if we just do that. Keep that in mind. And keep in mind, when we do it, whatever we do, however deep we, we water, that we try to still stay within that zone.